title of our second teaching is Wisdom from Above. And we're going back to where we were in our first teaching in James chapter 3. And we're looking at a verse that's just ahead of the verse that is our text verse really for this um, conference. Um, so turn there, if you would, to James chapter 3 verse 17. And it says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. You know, one of the things that is required of us if we're going to be people that are peace speakers and peacemakers is we're going to have to have some wisdom, right? Some discernment and know how we need to speak to people and know... Uh, how people are receiving things by their body language and and even how we're speaking things out having to do with our body language and we need to be conscious of this if we're wanting people to be receiving messages from us in the right way the Lord will give us the wisdom that is needed because his spirit is there inside of us and remember he says in the word that the Holy Spirit shall teach you all things and so we find here in James 3.17, we find eight things uh, that is uh, speaking about the wisdom from above. So the wisdom from above, there is it opened up in James 3.17, but the wisdom that is from above, and it gives us eight things. So we're going to talk briefly about those eight things, and then we're going to go into some other passages to read. It says first that it's pure. The wisdom from above is pure. And so that just means that it has good intentions, right? Uh, if we go to speak to people and we, are, we go with an ill intent, well, this is not the wisdom from above. That's pretty simple, right? And the second thing it says is that it's peaceable. You know what peaceable is, is it's free of conflict and free of arguments. It's not contention, uh, contentious and it is free from strife. So the wisdom that is from above is not only pure, it's, it's got good intentions, but it is peaceable and it is free of conflict and free of strife. The third thing that it tells us here in this passage is that, that the wisdom from above is gentle. And this means that it's tender and it's not harsh, right? How we say things, I'm very guilty of this, of saying things in, in a non-gentle way, especially when it comes to the kids and they're getting in trouble or they didn't listen to me the first time. And so I don't say always say things in the way that the Lord is really would like for me to do this. He wants me to be gentle. There's a way to be firm, but still be gentle, right? Be tender and not be harsh. The fourth thing it tells us here about the wisdom from above is that it is easy. Easy to be entreated. So this easy to be entreated is that you're basically easily approachable and you're someone that's easy to come to with a question or a problem. And this is what it means here in scripture. And so we think about God being that wisdom from above and being all of these things at any given time and think about how many times that you've gone to him he is easily to be entreated easy to be entreated he is always approachable you know um, you've probably known people in your life that were they're not the kind of people that were approachable um, and that whenever you had something that you needed to go to them about it didn't matter what it was but if you had to go to them about something they were not easily uh, to be approached. They were not easy to be approached. They were difficult. You were having some anxiety about approaching them. You know, we sometimes can be this way. But it tells us here in Scripture that the wisdom that is from above is easy to be entreated. And that is easy to be approached. Uh, the fifth thing it tells us is that it is full of mercy this wisdom from the above above is full of mercy and you know what mercy is mercy is not giving someone something that they deserve right if they deserve your a harsh reaction or you think they deserve a harsh react, 
reaction because they've done something, they've really legitimately done something wrong against you or said something to you or have said something behind your back about you. The wisdom that is from above is full of mercy. And so this wisdom causes us, if we use the, the wisdom of the Lord, it causes us to be full of mercy to others and to not respond to them in a way that we think that we should. And it's also, full, being full of mercy is, is giving people things that you, they don't deserve, right? It's, it's being good to them even though they maybe don't deserve it. This is what being full of mercy is. This is the wisdom from above. So think about this in your, in your last conflict that you had. And you had some strife maybe. And think about how you spoke. And go back to this passage and we've, we've gotten through the first five. Pure, with good intent. Peaceable, free of conflict. Gentle, easy to be approached, easy to be entreated. Full of mercy, you're forgiving. Here's the sixth thing, and full of good fruits. <laughs> full of a good product, right? How many times do we go in conversations that are tense and we can get to a space where we don't get the product that we're looking and that we desire to get because there's strife? The wisdom that is from above, though, has a good product. It produces this good fruit, and it's full of good fruit. Full of good fruits, it says. Verse, uh, the seventh part of that verse, uh, speaking about wisdom from above, is without partiality. That means it doesn't take sides, right? I have multiple children, and this has been something that um, my husband and I have worked really, really uh, hard to not show favoritism, right? Because, it, you know, at different times, it, it can be perceived by another child you know, that you may be favoring one. So you've got to consciously be aware of how everybody is receiving this. And I was actually having a conversation with a couple of my children this week, and I was telling them, I said, you know, I said, you all do not envy one another. You, you don't envy each other. They were like, yeah, that's right, we don't. We really don't. You know, if they have conflict, it's, it's uh, you know, it's just kind of somebody's being moody or, you know, it's they just... They don't envy each other. And I said, I remember whenever I was expecting our second child, which was a, a, a daughter, and we'd already had a daughter. And I remember when, when I was pregnant with her, how I, I loved this first child that I had so much. And I said, oh my goodness, I don't want either one of these children to feel like that they're not as just as loved. By me and so I knew that having a newborn was very demanding and and could can be very you know just each child is different and so when I was pregnant I decided you know when the, when I have this baby I am going to be sure that this other child always feels included in what's going on if if and I just would pay attention. And so what happened when, when we had the second one, I would just pay attention. So if my little daughter who was almost two when the baby was born, she, if she came over and she wanted to sit in my lap, then I would just make room for her. No matter how kind of inconvenient it may be, I was a nursing mom. And sometimes she'd want to sit with me when I was nursing the baby. But she was not quite two, so she wouldn't stay very long, but she would want to come and, and want to, to be held by me too. And so I would always pick her up and I would always hold her as well. And I would say, oh, you know, my second daughter was Heidi. I said, oh, Heidi is so lucky to have a sister like you. You are such a good big sister. You are going to just love her so much. And I continued this trend throughout all of the children that I had. I had seven children. And I continued this pattern. 
and it and it has set well. Um, our our oldest daughter is actually 26. We've adopted her into our family, and then we have a daughter. Our oldest biological daughter is 24, and then our youngest is nine. It's a son, and so we have sons and daughters from uh, nine to 26, and they don't have envy between one another. And this, uh, speaking here about this without partiality, when we don't take sides, we're being fair. And the Lord says that this is, this is a righteous attribute of mine. This is the wisdom from above when we don't take sides. And then the eighth thing that it speaks about there is that without hypocrisy, boy, this is, this gets us all at times, but hypocrisy is, is living contrary to what you're speaking. It's basically being fake. Now, some people say, oh, I'm never, I'm never hypocrite. I'm never fake. But, you know, everybody changes in different situations and different environments, you know. If you're at a ball game, you might be shouting and just jumping up and down and having a good old time. But if you're at church, you're, you're not doing this, right? This is not hypocrisy. But sometimes with the different types of people that we're around can change what we say or what we do. And this is being hypocritical. But the scripture says that the wisdom that's from above is without hypocrisy. And so that means that it's genuine. That means it's not fake. That means that it's real. So hold your place uh, there. We're going to hold our place and we're going to turn to Psalm chapter 37. We're going to read a few different verses in Psalm and uh, even some in Proverbs, and then we're going to return back there. But Psalm 37, we're going to read verse 30. It says, The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh. Of judgment it says it tells us here what the mouth of the righteous does it speaks wisdom and remember referring back to the wisdom that is from above is pure peaceable gentle easy to be entreated full of mercy and full of good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy this is the wisdom from above now let's turn to Psalm 49, verse 3. We're just we're just kind of touching on these verses, just seeing what the Lord says about wisdom. Psalm 49, 3, it says, My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. See what what we meditate on, what we think about, what's inside of our heart comes out of our mouth. That's why it's so important. You know, have you ever just, just flew off the handle and you're like, I have no idea why, I, I had no idea I was gonna do that. I, had, I have no idea why I did that. I have no idea why I said that. Your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, mouth speaks and, and, you, and sometimes you don't even know what's going on inside of you. And the Lord says, come to me, let's talk. I'll show you. My Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Turn to Psalm 104. And we're going to read just one verse there also. Psalm 104, verse 24. One hundred four, twenty-four. It says, O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Now, let's really take this in what it's saying. It says, O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. And it says, In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. You know what it's telling us there? That it was the wisdom of God that made these things. And all these marvelous works that we have seen the Lord do in, this, in, in his creation and when, what we can see all these marvelous works of the Lord, they came by wisdom. That wisdom that is from above exceeds so, so greatly just these eight points that we're speaking about. That wisdom is so powerful and so strong and the wisdom that is from above and God himself 
created all things in his wisdom. This is the, <clears throat> this is the power in having wisdom. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and turn to Psalm 136. <clears throat> We're going to read just a couple more here. Psalm 136 and verse 5. 136, 5. It says, To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. Speaking of the Lord, it says, By wisdom made the heavens. You know, when we think about God, we think, oh, he's, he's so powerful. He's all-knowing. He, uh, he is uh, omnipresent. He's with us all the time. He's eternal. He's the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He, he never had a start. He'll never have a finish. He is eternal. But we haven't maybe thought about it in this way that it was the wisdom of God that created things. And see, where does wisdom, when we think of wisdom here on this earth, where does where does it originate from? In our minds, right? But our hearts are connected. How important is it and how powerful is it what we can do with the wisdom that is from above, that the Lord himself, his wisdom is inside of us. His Holy Spirit's inside of us, so therefore we have his His wisdom. Not all of it, but we have a, a, a great, what what is needed. Of his wisdom we have what is needed in order to get through and endure everything here on this earth has already been given to us in the wisdom of the Lord and his spirit that's inside of us and that Holy Spirit that says he will teach you all things that's what the scripture says it doesn't say just some anything that we need to know he will teach it to us so we're gonna turn back in Psalm we're almost done here. We're just reading a few things about wisdom here, what the scripture says about it. And we're going to be in Psalm 111. And I'm just going to read one verse there in Psalm 111. And that's verse 10. Psalm 111, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. The fear of the Lord. Having respect of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Having a reverence for the God of heaven is the beginning of wisdom. And then it goes on to say there, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. How we live, right? Because if we think right, we do right. So this wisdom that is from above is pure, it's peaceable, it's gentle, it's easy to be entreated, full of mercy and full of good fruits and without uh, partiality and without hypocrisy. And we do these things and we live in a way that is conducive to the Lord and what he would have for us because we have a, a, holy, a holy fear a reverence to him and it says in his praise endureth forever <laughs> the praise of the Lord endures forever you know we can praise mankind and we can praise the things that man has done even you know some of the great inventors you could you know think think about some of them and even modern day inventions and we can praise them right but that praise will end but the praise of the Lord is eternal it is everlasting that is our God. Now, turn over to Proverbs. This is going to be the last text that we turn into before we just go back to our original passage there in James 3. But we're going to read in Proverbs chapter 1, just a few verses there, 2 through 7. It says, To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to dark to understand a proverb and interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction you know what wise counsel is? 
is godly counsel. And God will put the right people in your life at just the right time. Because sometimes we are in a, in a space in our minds where things are so clouded up, we don't know what to do. We don't know what decision to make. We don't know where to go next, right? But the Bible tells us that we're, that this godly, that this godly counsel, right? This wisdom that's from above, right? If you go to somebody and you're getting advice and you're looking for that wisdom, see if they fall in line with these things, these eight things. But it says there that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fools despise wisdom and instruction. When we despise wisdom of God and the instruction of God, which means that we despise his word, and society today as a whole are, are leaning and have been against the words of the Lord. And the Bible calls this foolish. It's foolish. You know what the end thing of, for a fool is? Destruction. Destruction is the end for the fool. We, we want to always remember, no matter what is going on in our life, no matter where we're getting torn, no matter where the storm's coming from, no matter how, how difficult it may be, that God has good counsel for you. And he has it there in his spirit. And his spirit will lead you to the right place in his word. And he will teach you all things. And he will give you good counsel from even others. Right? But it, the wisdom that is from above is pure. It's got good intent. It's peaceable. It's free of conflict. It's easy to be intruded. It's easily approached. He's full of mercy. He's forgiving. And he's full of good fruits. It has a good product. There are good results. It's without partiality. Not taking sides. And he's without hypocrisy. Living what we teach. Living what we say. Not being fake. But just being real. That's the wisdom that's from above. And in order for us to be peacemakers and peace speakers, turn back there to James 3. And this time we're going to read verses 17 and 18 together. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. This wisdom from above becomes the fabric of those peacemakers. And that's what the Lord desires for us to be and how and how he desires for us to be to this world and the people in this world. To our family, to our co-workers, to our neighbors. Is there anybody on this earth that God doesn't care about? No. No, he, he, he cares and loves them all. And it, and it tells us in the word that he desires that not any that we, they should, that he desires that everyone come to repentance. Not that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's what the word says. That's the desire of the Lord. In a word, world full of contention, are you going to be a peacemaker? Are you going to be a peace speaker? We must first go to the source, that righteousness of Christ and the wisdom that is from above.